Hi, I'm Claire Tompkins, the Clutter Coach, and this is the Organize Your Life podcast. I am passionate about organizing because it makes my clients' lives so much easier, more relaxed, and with more time to spend the way they want to. In every podcast in the show, I'll lay out a simple organizing concept, and I'll tell you why it's important. I'll also include an action step at the end so you can start practicing right away. My specialty is chunking down this big topic so it's not overwhelming. That's the concept for this podcast, which is based on my first book, 52 Simple Ways to Get Organized. The book is available on my website and on Amazon. I work with clients in person in the Berkeley, California area and via email and Skype, so you don't have to be local to me. Visit the Hire tab on my website or email me at claire at cluttercoach.net. If you like the show, please rate it and review it. To do that, go to my website, cluttercoach.net, and scroll down for the show notes. Each show notes post has a link to leave a review in iTunes. I would so appreciate that. Okay, on to the podcast. Welcome to Podcast 53, which is based on Simple Way number 44, Tidying Up as a Meditation. Routine physical tasks can be good opportunities to multitask since you don't have to think about them while you're doing them. On the other hand, they can also be a great time to take a break mentally. There's a Zen saying, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Being present and mindful is being enlightened. It's not just the path to enlightenment. Now, you don't have to go become a monk, but you can give your mind a break simply by paying attention to your physical actions and not letting your mind obsess and worry. Also, not stressing yourself out trying to be more productive. When you release the stranglehold you have on your brain's workings, you often find that new ideas and solutions will bubble up effortlessly, as they do in the shower. We've all had that experience, right? That's the paradoxical part. When we think of being productive, we often go toward how to do things faster and do more of them. Slowing down seems like the wrong direction. And certainly letting your mind just wander can't be worthwhile. Isn't that the mental equivalent of junk food? Let me clarify that I'm not talking about daydreaming, although there are good reasons to do that in a structured way to increase productivity. What I'm talking about is guiding your mind to focus simply on a series of routine movements. What makes a series of routine movements? Habit. I talk a lot about habits and how helpful they are on this podcast. When a task is habitual, you don't have to think about it. When you don't have to think about something, the tendency, though, is to fill up that space with another task. As the philosopher Blaise Pascal wrote, all men's miseries derive from not being able to sit in a quiet room alone. I meditate by sitting, but I also do it along with these routine tasks. In a way, this is multitasking because I'm getting a task done that needs doing, and at the same time, I'm conditioning my mind to focus better because I'm training it to filter out and let go of distractions. That's pretty much what meditation is all about. And that's why it's good for your productivity. Once you go back to work, you can focus for a longer period of time. Really focus and get important work done. It feels like cheating a bit to call this meditation, but I say it's more of a hack. With sitting meditation, you focus on the breath, but you know your mind will continue to wander. You just bring it back over and over. When your hands are busy, though, it gives your brain a little something to keep it from thinking too much. Full attention to the task at hand keeps you in the present. It prevents you from dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. That means less stress. In the present, it's just you and your task and nothing else, so there's nothing to be worried about. Of course, you can meditate while doing a number of tasks. I suggest the evening tidy up because you are setting up a productive environment for yourself for the next day. It makes an impression on your mind to put items away, to close up computer files, and file away folders. You get a three-part benefit. You're calming your mind by focusing only on a few physical activities. You're getting that important task done, and you're developing a mindset of productivity. Focusing on the physical part means not reading that file you're about to close, not thinking about how much other filing you have to do that you haven't gotten to. Just stick with the movement part and let the other thoughts go. The present is past as soon as you can think of it, but it's also limitless because it keeps arriving. So you're not really slowing down. You're being fully engaged in what's happening right now. You'll feel less pulled to what's not happening, what might have happened, what you think should happen. 
Right now, what can you do? Decide that when you wash the dishes tonight, you will just feel the warmth of the water and the slipperiness of the soap on your hands. Listen to the water spraying. Observe the colors and shapes of the dishes. Just wash the dishes and nothing else. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm Claire Tompkins, The Clutter Coach. If you like the show, I'd love it if you leave a rating and review in iTunes. You can subscribe, too, so the podcast will be ready and waiting for you to listen to. You'll find the show notes on my blog at www.cluttercoach.net. And you can check out my store to find books I've written and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you're a fan of the show, you can become a patron on patreon.com for as little as a dollar a month. You can find my page by going to the Patreon website, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and searching on Clutter Coach. I'll still post the podcast free of charge, but I've got some cool rewards for folks who want to help me make the show even better. Come back next week for a new podcast.